like shield or kind of like her, um, she has another word for it, but. Like her safe place? Yeah, like a safe mm -hmm. place or something like that. And she was like, you know, people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was, that was fine, like her dog liked me and everything. Like she would say, hey, you know, you just should be belong here type thing. Like, oh, okay. So you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you? And there was some discussion there with Ann yeah, Meadows. She, and yeah, she had sent an email about Dan about like how we would go about like selling the house. Yeah. And I think Ann told her about you know get like Ann was always about getting pre-approved. Just like you know like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house, so it's like you know much faster. Yeah, so you just quickly transition from one to the other. Okay. When did that happen? Remember? I think it was either right before we left. No, that had to have been like first week of August, somewhere around there. I think she may have contacted her. Okay. So the plan was maybe to buy a house. I think you told me in Brighton, you think about buying a house in Brighton. Yeah, just like she Monday. liked that, uh, that Adams 12 mm -hmm. school system or something. Yeah. So, okay. I think, I think that's what Brighton is. Adams. So. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you called that the school that day on Monday? I, I was freaking out. I didn't know, like, like I was thinking in my head, like, what I had just did, what I had just done, and I didn't know, like, it was, it was, even, it was stupid to do anything. Just, I mean, to call the school, to call Ann, to call anybody. I mean, it, I mean, they were right to be, you know suspicious about anything looks I knew I, I probably sounded eccentric on the phone and out of out of sorts and just you know I can only, only uh, I don't even know what they were thinking they heard me I think they thought I was weird but I don't know how you would not sound weird you know like you said so so are you 100% sure the girls were still around and alive when you drove out. Okay, so that's completely accurate. There's nothing, nothing else about that. They, they got in the truck. Okay. Where did the blanket go? It's either it's probably in the trash can or something. I think. In the it, trash. I, it wasn't like it was still in my truck. Okay. We thought we saw some GPS where you had stopped by near a construction oh. a roll off dumpster. Is that true or I think yeah, I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. So was that would have been on the way back to the house? The my neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kunov was there? Okay. Was it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there because, like, in case we had like a spill or something, oh. yeah. if you ever get crude oil on you, you don't. Yeah, I, had, I like I have like new, I have like two pairs of boots, uh, and all kinds of different stuff in there, just because like I just one time I had to clean up a spill and I had defrost on and I had like a headache for like two weeks because oh. like the crude oil that come with that. So I always have some in there. So where did you keep them after you took them off? Like, did you just change out there into your new? Other uh, so I, like, I, I dumped my clothes in that dumpster. But that wasn't that on the way back when you were coming? Like, you had already worked the whole day, yeah. right? Yeah, I'd worked no. well, work, like, till like, 11 or so. 11. Yeah. So it was back when, well, when Nicole Atkinson... Yeah, was, when she was at, yeah, when she at my house. Yeah, when she was at my house. when I knew someone else at the house. Right. Did you think right then, like, oh, fuck, like, here we go? Or what were you thinking about? I, I didn't even know why she was there. I was like, I didn't know, like, maybe maybe she had an appointment or something with Shanann. I, I didn't know. What did you think, like, that day, like, what you were going to say? Like, what was your plan? Were you just going to go home and be, like, report to the police that your family's gone? I, or I, like, once, like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Like, after everything, I mean, I don't even know how I was even acting even normal to people that I was around. Because when, like... Troy and Cody and Chad and Melissa and all them, like, you know, when they showed up on the site, I don't even know how I was even being somewhat even coherent what I was saying, but apparently that understood me. So I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, I, this wasn't like something like some 
Criminal Minds type. Like well thought yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't nothing like that. It was minute by minute at that point. Yeah, it was, I had no idea what the books were. So once the girls were, were gone, um, was it also just a minute by minute thing as far as the oil tanks? Yeah, I, I didn't know what, what to do. I mean, I, just thinking about an oil tank just makes me want to throw up. Mm. And was that just because it was in front of you and there it was and it just presented itself? It wasn't a, a plan for him? Okay. Was there any reason why the separate ones? No, it's, it's like you said, it was like a going up, just going up the stairs, and it just didn't. No, like what Frank said is like I was trying to separate everybody. That's not. No. No, yeah. I didn't want to separate anybody. What was the reason? I, I, I can't even tell you. It was like, like I said, like something else was in control of what I was doing, and it was like I was doing something I never thought I would ever do in my life. Did you think there would be less chance of someone finding them if they were in separate tanks, or? I don't know. Sounds like you're a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't. I, whatever, whatever my reasoning was in my head that day, it wasn't, it wasn't sound. It was nothing was right. And you don't even remember thinking about it? No, it was just like, it was like, like a reaction of something that I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. Can we talk about the trash bags? Do you remember that? Oh, with, uh... There were two? Oh, uh, with... Okay. Yes. Yeah, trying to... Because, like, this sheet kept... I didn't want to... Like, when, when I was putting this one coherent, I guess, thing I had, like, I didn't want the girls looking at Shanann while they were in the back seat. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do? I put a trash bag on one end and on her feet and on her head so they didn't have to see. Okay. And they were just too little to kind of figure out, right? Yeah, they didn't know what was going on. Okay. That's good. I just know, like, when I was driving up there, I mean, you know, they were just, you know, sitting there just, you know, kind of asleep or kind of just, like, you know, holding on to each other, laying in each other's laps. You know, I, I didn't... Do you remember having any thoughts or thinking about why not just putting them all together with your name? Honestly, honest, it was just happening so fast. I had no I, time to really have a thought that was my own. Okay. But I wasn't like dutifully trying to separate anybody from yeah. passing away, trying to keep anybody separate. And everything, everything, you know, Frank Sandy and Frank said, you know, like, I, I, I don't hold it against them. I mean, they can hate me for, they, they have a right to hate me for the rest of their lives. They don't hate they, you. In fact, while we're on the subject, I, I speak with them weekly, and, and I told them that we were going to come here, and then hopefully they would speak with us. And they told me to tell you, understandably, they're, you know, they're devastated. Um, but they actually said that they, they love you. They still love you. And, and Sandy explained it, you know, he's, he's our son, son-in-law for eight years. I can't just turn that off. So they don't hate you. They don't. That's um, amazing to hear that. Yeah, well, and I can tell you Sandy was, was, was the one that was most resistant to penalties in this case. And she said that, she told me that from the very beginning. Um, but she didn't want that. It's God's decision. It's not her decision. And then she told me that even then. So it's not just a one-time thing that, that she has said it to me. Um, it's been over the whole course of, of the event. So um, that's probably one of the most honest things someone's ever told me. You know? So that's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, faith is, uh, you know, she's obviously a believer. So am I. I get it. So I understand it. Um, so. That's amazing to hear that. Yeah. Good people. I would, have, I would have figured they would have hated me for. They don't. I mean, yeah, anybody would think that. I certainly would have, but I, I have to admit, I was surprised. 
really taken back by that, but they certainly don't. So. What did they say when they knew you were coming out here? Um, they just they said they want to know, you know, details because they need closure, and that's really all they want, and, and they want to keep it private. And I said, well, absolutely, that's, you know, we'll talk to them about what you told us, and just so they can put it past them they're having a hard time dealing with it and trying to get past it all and, um, and I think that may help just to, you know, just to know closure is you know I mean my parents still think you know like I've, I told them I played guilty for a reason right Right. and like I told it to them when they had that uh, video video phone thing in Colorado the day before like I played guilty but I played guilty for a reason I, I didn't just, you know, I knew other people were watching. So I didn't just go in and, like, just say anything. But, mm-hmm. you know, like, they seemed to take it, like, okay. And what made you do that, Chris? What made you plead guilty? I didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want them to go through this for two or four years. I didn't want my attorneys to lie for me for four, for two or four years. Like, they, I mean, they would have done anything I told them to do. Sure. That's what they're. I don't see how they can do that. And like you know, that's what attorneys do. You know, like they take their defendant and they say, hey, like, what happened? Okay, we'll go with that story. Like I told them everything I just told you guys, and it's just like they just and they got together. Like, well, if you know, if if they ever wanted, if they ever offered a plea deal, would you ever want to like just do guilty? To? I'm like, yeah. I mean, if it, if we can end this, end it. Like I was like in September. I told them that. Really? Yeah, they, like, but, you know, it was way too early, and the prosecution was still doing their, yeah. this guy used to grab an evidence and all kinds of stuff, and that wasn't even really on the table. So I think it was, in, like, around Halloween. Mm-hmm. I think that's when the, the prosecution went to, went to Frank and Sandy and Frankie's house. And it's talking, like, if we can end this, would you be open to that? And that's when, like, you know, like, the whole death penalty and everything, all that right. conversation happened. And um, I guess they were surprised that it, it would just be over. Yeah. And we were all in shock. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that was, like... It's like we were going 100 miles an hour, and then we just hit a brick wall. Like, that's what it felt like to all of us. So, I mean, obviously you had more time to yeah, I mean, I, I contemplate mean, it than yeah, us. Yeah, I was... I, I mean, I told, I told John and Kate and Sophia and everybody, Amy, hey, it's like, if we can just stop this and like I know it's you know everybody's telling me to fight fight this you know there's no like there's like everybody's saying there's like not enough evidence to such and this this and that and I'm just like no I'm just like, this needs to end like I don't want people to have to because for Frank and everybody to have to fly back to Colorado every single time and get reminded of this like I'm not sure it's never going to go away but to actually have to come and talk about having other people talk about it, have you know, have all three of you get on the witness on the witness stand and say you know what they saw, yeah. what they've seen, you know, what what they they heard on tapes and everything like that. It's just like I don't want people to live that over and over and over again for for years. Like if I could just end this for everybody, and then like if there's any closure at all, they could you know they could start then instead of like. 2022, right? You know, like you know, and everything just like. So I know it only get worse for everybody. So did it have anything to do with you not having the death penalty? No, like I mean, honestly, like when I was sitting in that cell, I felt like I should have died. I mean, I, I was listening to everybody telling me like, hey, if you do this and this, you can hang yourself in that cell. You could do this and that. And you can, they were like telling you stuff. Yeah, you they, could they, you could drown yourself in the toilet if you wanted to fill your toilet bowl up or something. It was. Um, they've been there a bunch of times, and like you know, I was at one point I was listening to them. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, you know, I just felt like maybe I could, maybe there's a different purpose for me somewhere. You know, maybe it's here. I don't know. Like I prayed to God every day that He would move me away from Colorado, like move me away from like the DOC there, because I just knew like cause they were saying there was a hit on me. <laughs> I said if I was going to a DOC in Colorado, like I'd last a week and I'd be dead. Because of like the gangs and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So like 
I just felt like God moved me here for a reason. And I'll, you know, hopefully I can help people that way. But like, I didn't want my family, I didn't want my family, all of our friends, like, you know, having to go through that because after a while I knew it was like, this stuff was everywhere. And I knew like all her Thrive friends, everybody that was just like, it would just, it would just broke, just put that hole in their heart just a little bit bigger every time. I didn't want that. I knew it would have gotten worse. I didn't want it, I didn't want it to get any worse than it already was. Did you ever think about, well, you know, it could be very believable, what I told him, it could be very believable that Shanann did, you know, end the girls. And so maybe if I tried to convince people that, maybe if I fought with my attorneys on that, maybe I could lessen it somehow. Did you ever think about that? Honestly, I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah? No. Okay. I wondered. I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. And what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. Yeah. I didn't, like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked shit in. Mm-hmm. I knew it was like, you know, I mean, through all this, like I got letters from some of my friends that even said, you know, you know, when we you know, went over to your house, we could see, you know, she had more of a dominant personality and more of like, you know, you know, you're always helping with the kids and everything. You just, you know, you're a great dad and everything. We could see, you know, a couple things that I never saw or, you know, whatnot. And even my best friend Mark even said, you know, there's always, you know, something, you know, I didn't really get with you, man. I was like, nobody ever told me any of this stuff, but okay. But yeah, it was, I never thought about that story. And, you know, that's what my attorneys were going with. Yeah. And then, like, I think it was probably the second week I told them, like, what had really happened. What did they say after that? They were quiet. They were writing it down. They were, they, did, they said they wouldn't judge me. So I told them. I told them everything that happened. And they, you know, Appreciated, like I guess you know, most of the time, you know, their defendant or their you know, defense don't like tell them actually what happened. No, yeah. they just you know tell them, all right, get get me out, get me out of here. And this is what happened. But I told them what happened. I I didn't want them going. If this was going to go like anywhere in courts, I didn't want them to be under a false pretense and like get surprised. So I know like there was probably things that you guys probably knew that. I mean, if I, if I just kept, if I lied to them and just tell them, no, this, this is what happened, that it would have, like, made them look, you know, foolish and stupid and just, like, you know, unprepared, and I'm just like, this is what happened. And they, you know, they appreciated me telling me telling them that, so now they, they would be prepared, and that's when they were saying, like, you know, if, if it was ever, you know, if we ever went to them, the prosecution, and say, hey, if we could end this, would I be open to it? I'm like... If it could end, it's ended. I know there was like, um, wasn't her phone found on the couch or in between the couch cushions? Mm-hmm. Like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it yeah, in there? I, I, why, I was, why did you do that? I, I don't know what was going on that morning. Like, even like, you know, her watch, her phone, like, I, you know, that was actually like, if I'd planned this, I would probably just take it out to the field, or something, you know? Mm-hmm. But, what you about know, her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you know, maybe she wanted. Maybe she actually really wanted a divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. Just put it there on the counter. She took it off? Or did I, you I, take I, it off? I took it off. Okay. Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. So the phone and her watch and the couch, was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. That's, I think, uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? I the phone and the watch. Yeah. I think I threw the therapy book she wanted me to read in the trash. I don't know. That was that morning? I probably, I think so. Were you trying to make it look like she threw it in the trash? I don't, I don't know. I just, like, oh. I, I just didn't think it was, nothing was ever going to work again. So it was... I didn't know what was going on. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door opened. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So 
there was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426 or something. And, and the garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps, of I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so like the basement, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing I really have down there is my workout, my, the bench press and whatnot. Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? Did you think about, well, maybe I'll take her out that way or... Mm-hmm. Is it a walkout basement? No. Or no. Was it at your house? Okay. No, it's like a garden level basement. So okay. But now I don't remember really... I'm, what's that? I don't think it worked out that morning. Like, were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like, did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely I packed my lunch and everything. Did all that, but I don't... I don't remember about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there at that time. Yeah, you got trash bags from there? Uh, maybe. Maybe maybe there wasn't any in the garage, and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. So there was a roll in your truck. It was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me. That would have been kept in the basement, maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Graham? Um, one of the more kind of poignant or tender moments in all of this was um, seeing you with your dad when he came in. Um, what was it like when you picked him up at the airport? It was, it was very strange. It was, it was kind of like I almost knew this probably the last time I'd ever see him on the outside. In my head, I knew that. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Honestly, like, he just wanted to talk about sports. He just wanted, yeah. he just, like, you know, he, he's always kind of, like, you know, distance himself from like uh, like a problem type thing like you know when like if there's ever an issue or anything like that he always want to talk about like just bring up like when I would try to get him to quit smoking like all the time like this is after like I graduated high school and whatnot he would are you talking about cigarettes yeah okay. and uh, he would always like just change so he'd be like oh you never have in the race uh, football or something I mean he, he just never wanted like you know he said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it, and he was, boom, something else. And, you know, I just kind of felt like it was kind of like that, you know, like he, he asked, maybe asked, like, a few questions, like, you know, do you know where they're at, and do, do, do you think, you know, think you know where they're at or anything like that? I just, you know, told him no. And then, like, start talking about, just want to talk about sports and just, like, normal, normal things. And just kind of, I'm not sure if he maybe knew anything, you know, Maybe he kind of figured out something maybe happened and just wanted to talk to me as his, as his son. Is it possible he saw that you were in a stressful situation and wanted to do what he always did, make yeah. things comfortable? I think that was a good way to put it. I bet you picked up a lot of that from him. Yeah, because I mean, stressful situations, like, I I mean, the gray hair didn't show it, but, like, I, I try not to be in stress. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Like, you know, I worked on cars, there's a lot of stress. Because it's always, you know, it's on commission. You know, you get paid what you do, not by showing up. So, you know, then Darko was a little less stressful. Because, you know, I got paid just to be there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, was your dad's marriage, like, yours and Shanann's marriage, as far as, like, your dad was the more passive one and uh, your mom was the yeah, more dominant? mom was always the more aggressive one. Was she like Shanann, in a way? I mean, were you attracted to Shanann because she was kind of like how your mom and dad's relationship was? or It was like, you know, it, it almost mirrored, like, her mom and dad's relationship, honestly, because her dad's like my dad. Because they're both, like, kind of calm and cool. Mm-hmm. Like, right? I could see that, yeah. And her mom is very... Sandy rules that roof. Oh, yeah. 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 Very. And it's just like, you know, I, I, I kind of related it to that. Because, mm-hmm. like... Her mom always said, like, she she always told Shanann that she would marry somebody that was kind of like her dad. And I felt like I was kind of like her dad. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't, like, you know, I couldn't build a lot of things he could, but, you know, our personalities were kind of like, you know, I was always, you know, I think he really liked me the first time he met me because, like, I was um, helping, helping Shanann with this, uh, 
she had got this car from the dealership that she was working that she worked at, and she was driving around and it felt like you know the wheels wanted to fall off. And uh, I pulled over where her dad was, and I was like, I got her meat bit, jacked it up, and I was like, you know, trying to fix everything. He's saying like any other guy she'd ever dated would have just like stood by and watched me do it. And so like that's when she really like kind of kind of like me. Took to you. Yeah, it was just like I was I was always wanting to help people, not to not to hurt anybody. Well, and you helped her all through her lupus, and you're at the colonoscopy, yeah. and you're jacking up the car. And mm, yeah, I, I, did, I mean, any time she had an issue with, like, the car at the Dirty South Customs, and, like, I would just drive to work and see what I could do with it. You know, I would just you know, do whatever I could to help. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the reasons Frank and Sandy work so well is because Frank let Sandy be Sandy. Yeah. And they probably both <laughs> saw in you that you let Shanann be Shanann. Yeah, I just, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't try to change her. Right. Like, I just let her be, you know, who she is. Yeah. She's like, you know, she's gung ho. She's, yeah. you know, she knows what she wants. She's gonna go get it. Yeah. And I didn't say, hey, you know, you can't do that. And that's what her first husband. Did. Yeah. She he controlled everything. He he tried to be Sandy, and it didn't work. And she and she turned into almost like me. She was like, she just kind of like like played back and just kind of like let him do what he was doing. And I think she learned after that that she could just be herself. And with me, she could definitely be herself. Yeah. So that's how it worked. So do you think your dad had any inkling? Because I'm trying to remember the timing. He showed up when you were still walking around. You weren't in any trouble yet when Ronnie came in. Yeah, I, was, I had met with you the night before, mm-hmm. for like a, three or four hours. And then I was at Nick and Amanda's house. Okay. I out there, and that's when I went to go pick him up. Okay. And you picked him up. It was early that morning, right? He was like 10.30, I think, when this flight came in. Okay. And then so from there, you, I, you guys probably drove home and then to the police station. Yep. And the, the talks there were no type of confession from you. Okay. No, it was like, he, just, he was just going to wait. Okay. I told him, like, you know, if you're hungry, just, there's like that barbecue joint down the street. Yeah. And like, you know, it's good. And just, you know, he told me he never left. He didn't. I wasn't lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was faithful. He was... Yeah, just, I mean, I don't know how he lasted that long without food. We ended up giving him food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he, uh, he was great. Um, and the reason I ask is because when I look back and watch the video, um, now knowing what I know after talking to you today, I can see how genuine he was. But I just didn't know if you guys had come up with some sort of plan. Okay. No, he, he, we never talked about him. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, if I had told him anything, he would have probably just told me tell them right away. I think you're right. Now, he would have still loved me either, either way, but he would have told me if you need to tell yeah. them, like right now. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be there for 14 or how long it was, like 10 hours or something else that day. You were there a long time. Yeah, but it was, he would have told me just to say, just, just to tell you. Yeah. Did you know walking in there that you were going to tell us? Or did you think? I didn't, I mean... I knew there was a reason you brought me back in. I know, well, for the... Um, what did you think about the polygraph? That was horrible. <laughs> Why do you I, say that? I don't know how you do that. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> Tammy's a torturer. I am not. No, like... I mean, Tell you, me. You answered... Oh, you asked me questions for, like, well, like, three or four hours beforehand, and then you do the polygraph, and it's like you just break down somebody's brain to where, like... Too like, much too, or too what? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Jello, and it's just like... I. I know it's it's you guys have a job and you have a plan and that's what you execute it. But she's thorough, right? There's no. just no there's yeah. no way to get out of there without the truth. No, I mean I I kind of knew like where because right when I he asked me about like Saturday night the when I told you about the rocking I was like man she was like going through her head. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, I, we did know we found out about Nikki right before the polygraph. I I, I figured that out after after. With meeting with John and everybody that yeah. she had met with somebody from the CBI mm-hmm. like yes. the, like on the 14th or the 15th I was just like hey, they were talking oh okay so you already knew so but I mean I didn't know how extensive it was but yes we, we knew yeah, I, I mean I walking in there that day just walking into that room I knew I wasn't walking out yeah just just the feeling I had walking in that room just seeing, I mean, I don't remember if the polygraph stuff was already in there. I think it was. It but, was, yeah. 
but it was I knew I, I just felt I just feel like sometimes when people you know do do the bad thing and they stay like some part of me thinks well I think they're here because they really want to tell us what happened because it's not normal that you want to keep all that in like that just kills people on the inside and I could tell it was killing you that day yeah I mean it was just like that 13th when I slept in the house I didn't nothing I didn't know I'm thinking I just slept maybe like two hours because I just finally just got so tired I just fell asleep I turned I had every light on I didn't I nothing felt right what were you thinking about during your media interviews I didn't want to do it why did you do it did you feel like you had to do it I felt like you know they would have just kept knocking on my door if until I answered it and like I didn't even set it up but you know Nicole Atkinson set it up she told me hey Fox is going to set it up she said Fox is going to be at your house at 10 30 I'm like what like, okay and you know I think I even called I even called you about it like what do you recommend that I do and he's like it's kind of up to you 